Okay, everybody. So on August 31st, 2024, the Boeing Starliner spacecraft, which you're seeing on the screen, they recorded this mysterious sound that kind of sounds like a hammer on a musical metronome. And I'm going to play that sound for you in a minute. And I'm not satisfied with the explanation that they gave us. I think they're hiding something and I have proof they're hiding a lot. But you can actually hear it. This is what it sounded like. So that's what the astronauts heard. This made headlines all over the world, absolutely everywhere. And so what I did is I took that recording into this program called WavePad. So I can do wave and frequency analysis of it. And I can see here on my in the green in the upper quadrant where I have my cursor, the spacing between the, the beats is pretty much consistent. In fact, I've measured this with a ruler, except for here. You probably heard that double beat. And the ratio of this smaller beat to the longer beat is 1 to 1.618. And that's golden ratio. And that is remarkable what that means in my model. And down here are my actual frequency band. So there isn't just one frequency sitting here in, in this hammering droning sound. And if I move my cursor down here to to the to the core of the hot spot, I'm at 40 432 hertz easily because because I can see in in, in the printout it's saying 430 to 451 hertz. But if you move, if you move the cursor, you have a little bit of wiggle room for your frequencies. But I know the number I'm looking for is, is 432 to 433. Now, if I come to the bottom down here, I'm at 366 hertz. And notice that that's very close to the number 365, which is the orbital period of Earth. And then when I come into this second band, if I look really close, it almost looks like a sine wave moving up and down on this second band. And I'm looking for the horizontal bands that are consistent. And, and this one here, I'm definitely at 591, which is my magic number, um, which I'll explain in a minute. And then I have all my other bands here that I've mapped out. And the way I map them out is, is very, very precise. And um, so I call this this graphic the Starliner Sounds close-up because I'm going to go really close up on my frequency bands. So at the bottom I have 365 and a quarter, which is the orbital period of Earth. I have 432 to 433, which actually the orbital period of Jupiter is 4,332. So I think the message here is an embedded series of orbital periods that keep repeating every single time on the metronome in the hammer. And right in here, my second band, which appears to have the sine wave action going around it, is definitely 591. And that I'm going to explain to you in a minute what 591 the 956 band here and the 2503 band up here are, they are orbital periods of hyperdimensional planets. Why? Because if I take 591, I'll put up my calculator right now so you can see this. My wife called out my name at 591 days after she died, August 9th, 2021. 591, look on my calculator, divided by one, point six one eight oh three three nine eight eight seven is exactly three sixty five point two five eight and that's ninety nine point nine 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 percent accurate to what we call the sidereal 
which is the precise orbital period, one rotation of Earth around the Sun. In fact, our Earth does not do the exact, exact time every single year. It deviates by as much as a half an hour, 45 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes every year. So there's no such thing as 100% timekeeping. And that number really, really stunned me when I saw this because it's a spiritual experience. I'm audibly hearing my wife, Crystal Serena's voice. And we're seeing the same data in the Starliner message, right? Because watch what happens next. I'm going to take 591 times the golden ratio, 1.618. Oh, three, three, nine, eight, eight, seven. And I'm going to get this number here, 956, which is a hyperdimensional orbit of a hyperdimensional planet in our, in our system, in our solar system. And times the golden ratio again, I'm going to get a number that's, that's better than 90% accurate to the orbit of, of a dwarf planet Ceres, which has an orbit of 16... 179 days around the sun and that band is right here right here and then again let me let me show you what happens if i take 591 591 divided by 1.618 oh, once i get earth Divided by the golden ratio again, this is the orbit of Venus, because the orbit of Venus is 225 days. 0.74 is going to barely affect the, the, the perfection of the harmony of the orbit of Venus. Divided by the golden ratio again, I get a hypothetical planet 139.51, which is well explained in my movie. Divided by the golden ratio again, I get about 97% accuracy to the orbit of planet Mercury. Divided by the golden ratio again, I get the orbital period. This orbital period matches not only the orbital period of what I'm calling planet Cherubim, but also the orbital period of, of, of this mini moon that entered our solar system um, called 2024 PT5 will orbit around the Earth um, and be with us for 53 to maybe 54 days. We don't know exactly what the orbital period is, but the question is, why does it match my number? Divided by the golden ratio again, this is the number of years that Jesus lived on the planet, which is 33. So I have 32.935. And of course, I can prove that this is very, very precise for the number of years he lived on Earth. Divided by the golden ratio again, this is planet Vulcan, which is a sudden appearing and vanishing planet that was first discovered in the 19th century. So why do I have all this accuracy here? And why are these numbers as frequency bands in the Starliner um, acoustics, which is, which is really, really incredible. So if I go here, and I go to um, um, to show you the model that I built from my wife's passing. That calling out my name at 591 days after she died, divided by the golden ratio, I get the sidereal period of Earth. Divided by the golden ratio, I get the sidereal um, period for Venus. And my accuracies are better than than 97% on almost all of these. Divided by the golden ratio again, this planet here, 139.51, I believe was responsible for the miracle of the sun at Fatima, and the, it matches the time period of the ascension day of Jesus, 40 days after Easter, and uh, um, mapping Yom Kippur on the lunar calendar comes into phase with this um, very periodically. And again, divided by the golden ratio again, I get the orbital period of Mercury, accurate to better than 97 percent i've already explained my accuracies in another video divided by the golden ratio again i get a um, planet to what i'm calling uh, 53.29 and then divided by the golden ratio again um, the planet for the seraphim which matches the the time period of jesus on the earth and then divided by the golden ratio i get the orbital period that was mapped 
for Planet Vulcan. So this is really incredible. And again, 591 times the golden ratio, you get um, the orbital period for the planet Virtues. So uh, times the golden ratio, again, I get Dwarf Planet Ceres. Times the golden ratio, I get the Angelic Planet Powers. Times the golden ratio, again, I get Jupiter. Notice again, Jupiter is 4332.58. That would be a very high frequency to transmit in the Starliner message. So I believe the 432, 433 range where these hotspots are on the metronome, um, it clearly indicative of the orbit of with the decimal moved over by one um, of Jupiter. So why, why is this data so accurate in the Starliner message? If it's just some noise problem. I mean, if it was a random noise problem, I wouldn't see these numbers and the frequencies. I would see a total mess. This is really organized um, mathematics. It's incredibly organized mathematics. So the question is, is why?